Most of your formulas will refer to cells or cell ranges for their function arguments. By referring to cells, you make your worksheet dynamic, efficient, and less error prone. So what exactly is cell reference? When you refer to a cell for a function argument or a component of a formula, the result of the formula or function will be dependent on the value entered into the cells that the formula or function refers to. If we were to enter equals A1 plus B1 into a cell, then the result would be the value inside cell A1 plus the value entered into cell B1. If we change the values entered into either cell, the result of the formulas would also change since they are dependent on the values in the referred cells. There are three different types of cell reference. Relative cell reference, locked cell reference, and a mix of locked and relative cell reference. For relative cell reference, if you copy and paste a formula that uses a relative cell reference, the cells that the formula refers to will change relative to the cell it was pasted into. For example, if we entered equals square root of A1 into cell A2, then copy and paste that formula into cell B2, it would then refer to cell B1 for its argument. Since we move the formula one column to the right, the cell that referred to for its argument also moved one column to the right. Locked cell reference. When we lock a cell reference, this means that no matter where we copy and paste the formula or function, the cell reference will not change. The way that we lock cell references is by inserting the dollar symbol before the column letter and the row number. If we entered the square root function and referred to cell A1, and then enter the dollar symbol before A and before 1 into a cell and then copied and pasted that function into another cell, the formula would re still refer to cell A1 since the cell reference is locked by the dollar symbols. You can also mix relative and locked cell references. For example, if we enter the square root function and then refer to cell A1, but only locked the column letter A, but not the row number one, and then copy and paste that function into a different cell, the column would always be locked in column A. However, the row would change relative to the row that the function is pasted. For example, we could paste the function several columns to the right, but remain in the same row it was initially inserted, and it would still refer to cell A1. This is because we remain in the same row and only change columns. Since the column was locked, the cell reference didn't change even though we pasted it several columns to the right. However, if we were to move down one row, then the function would refer to cell A2, since the row number of the cell reference is relative. In this example, we are referring to the previous month's balance in cell B19, and then adding the current month's income in cell C17, and subtracting the current month's expenses from cell C18. If we use the autofill feature to complete this budget, the cells that the formula refers to will be the same relative to their location. Now, I'm going to use the show formula feature. You can see that a formula is entered into all columns of the balance row. The formulas are the same except that the cells the formula refers to are relative to their location. The formula could be stated as one column to the left plus two rows above minus one row above. Now if you take a look here, we'll add another aspect to the budget and the formula. We add the factor that the account the balance is in is earning a small interest rate. We add the interest to the formula for the balance by multiplying the previous month's balance by the monthly interest rate in cell A23.
you can see that we locked the cell reference to cell A23 for the interest rate by entering in the dollar symbol before the column letter A and the dollar, dollar symbol before the row number 23. Now, no matter what cell we insert this formula, it'll always refer to cell A23 for the interest rate. How to change the type of cell reference. You can change your type of cell reference manually by inserting or removing the dollar symbols, or you can use the cell reference keyboard shortcut by simply pressing the F4 key on your keyboard. First, you point your mouse at the cell reference in your formula or function and then simply press F4. If you continuously press F4, you will cycle through all the different types of cell reference. How to refer to cells in a different worksheet. You're not limited to referring to only cells within a single worksheet. You can also refer to cells in different worksheets and even entirely different workbooks. The notation used to refer to cells in a different worksheet is the sheet name, exclamation point, the cell address. If you're working in a workbook and wanted to refer to cell B2 in a sheet named sheet 2, then you could simply select cell B2 in sheet 2, or you could manually enter your cell reference by typing sheet 2, exclamation point, B2. Your sheet name will always be separated by an exclamation point. If your sheet name has a space in the name, for example, sheet space two, then you must enclose the sheet name in single quotation marks. For example, in single quotation marks, you would enter sheet space two, exclamation point, B2. This is because your sheet name has a space within the name. How to refer to cells in a different Excel workbook. If you want to refer to a cell within a different workbook, you would refer to the cell using the following format. Within brackets, you would enter the workbook name, then the sheet name, exclamation point, cell address. So if we wanted to refer to cell B2 in sheet 2 in a workbook named data.xlsx, then we would refer to that cell by entering within brackets data.xlss, xlsx, because that's the workbook name, and then sheet 2, exclamation point, B2. This would refer to cell B2 within sheet 2 of the workbook data.xlsx. If there are spaces in the name of the other workbook or the worksheet in the other workbook, then you will enter the workbook name and worksheet name into single quotation marks. For example, if we were to re refer to a cell address within sheet two of the workbook name, it would be equals, and then within single quotation marks, workbook name within the brackets, sheet two, and then exclamation point, cell address. So if we were referring to cell B2 in a sheet named sheet two in a workbook named original data, we would refer to that cell by entering in equals within single quotation marks, original data within brackets because that's the name of the workbook then after the bracket, sheet two, exclamation point, B2. Instead of remembering the notation to enter in by re to refer to these cells, it's easiest just to refer to cells by selecting the cell reference with your mouse, especially when referring to a closed workbook. This is because when work a workbook is closed, you must specify the path and folders that your workbook is saved in. For example, if we were referring to a previously opened workbook, <clears throat> we'd have to enter in the following cell reference within single quotation marks. We would enter the drive, the folder, 
then the workbook name within brackets, the sheet name, exclamation point, the cell address. So for example, if we wanted to access the workbook original data, and we wanted to refer to cell B2 within worksheet 2, we would have to first, within some quotation marks, enter the C drive, backslash the folder, which will say it's my documents, backslash, then we would refer to the, um, the workbook name, which would be original data within brackets, sheet 2, then exclamation point, cell reference, which is B2. So as you can see, this can get pretty complicated, and this is why it's just easier to use your mouse and select the cell that you're referring to. You can also refer to workbooks that are located on another computer if the computers are linked in a network of computers. For example, if you were going to refer to cell B2 in a workbook named Original Data that was located in the Documents folder and the computer was named Computer 1, then refer to that cell by inserting equals within single quotation marks double backslash computer one backslash the drive which we'll let's say it's the C drive backslash the folder let's say it's documents backslash within brackets original data which is our workbook name then sheet two we close our quotation exclamation point then our cell reference which is B2 just remember that the path needs to be accurate or your cell reference will not work as you can see, cell reference can get pretty complicated. It's best to always enter your cell reference, select the cell you're referring to with your mouse. So automatically make the correct changes to the cell reference when you do things like change the name of the work, worksheet or the workbook, or when you open and close workbooks and change the location of the files on your computer. When referring to a cell in a different workbook or a different worksheet, Excel always uses the locked cell reference, not the relative. It's always locked. Therefore, if you copy and paste a formula that refers to another worksheet or workbook, be sure to change the cell reference to relative.